Hey guys, Travis the Fly Fishing Texan here. So we are on, San, on the San Gabriel River today here in Georgetown. It is cold. It is, well, not cold outside. It's probably like 70 degrees out here right now. The water is cold. It is swole. It's fast. But we're going to go catch some fish. This is one of my usual spots. I'll come in the spring every now and then. So I stop bouncing you guys around. So this is one of the, the usual spots. I'll come in the spring every now and then. Uh, wow this all the rain recently has totally changed it uh there's been just so much uh flooding activity and and things like that recently uh waters have receded a lot but man dynamics have changed but that's okay we're gonna go catch some fish we're gonna show you guys how to catch some fish in these kind of conditions all right stay tuned You guys a quick dynamic we're gonna go further on downstream but just to show you guys how unusual this is or, or how the waterway has changed here there's generally not even water here the water generally starts out here at this weed line and is normally probably about a foot lower than what it is right now and generally over in that area it's kind of a cove and the water didn't even hardly keep flowing and the main flow is right here um, and I mean, my and and this over here, this wa this waterfall type deal is generally never flowing like that. So, yeah, just to reiterate, there has been a lot of rain recently. It's really changed our waterways uh, dramatically this winter. So, just real quick, this is never like this again. Just a lot of extra water here recently. Um, anyway, so right over in this area and I'll show you on another piece of the video this is kind of where I'm gonna be fishing over here you can see all the current coming in here I'll probably stand over kind of in that area and then be fishing back over be fishing back over this way a little bit of still water they're hanging out right along in here where you see it still water and a little bit of current they're hanging out right in there so you just kind of throw a little bit over here just kind of let it flow back and normally I'm getting hit you know right right around that area so Let's uh, get in here and show you guys what I'm doing. Another nice little bass. Right up from that little hole right over there. Coming back. Whoop, there he goes. That little guy actually fought pretty hard. Just throwing right in here. And um, you can see there's a little bit of slack water right in here. Of course the current is just moving and the water's freezing. But there's a little bit of slack water right in here. So I'm just throwing over in there. Picking them out. So he took he took this fly. Alright guys, so real quick after that little sunfish, I just want to show you what I'm using. So I'm using a little patch rubber legs. This is just a little, you know, rinky dink one I, I made. It's hard to not focus in. So this is one I made a little while back. Anyway, um, about 18 inches down. So I got that as my, what we call a tractor fly. And then about 18 inches down, I have this little, it's about, that's about a number 16 or 18, uh, some kind of little copper nymph thing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what this one's called. Maybe like Copper John or something. I don't know what it's called. I'm not even gonna get into it, but it's some kind of little, little uh, number 16 or 18 nymph. Uh, so 18 inches, again, uh, my tractor fly, little patch rubber legs, about, uh, you know, on the end, so that's on the end of my leader. And then so about 18 inches down, uh, I've, I've had, I got this tied, you know, I got this uh, dropper tied directly to the hook, right? Got that tied directly to the hook, so about 18 inches down, you got, you got your little, uh, got your little fly here. Little, number, little like I said, little number 16 or 18 inch. 
So I'm showing you guys here the technique that I'm using to avoid the faster current that is in between myself and the slack water. I'm casting out there, but then I'm holding my rod tip nice and high so I can avoid as much of the quicker current as is possible and allow that line to drift as slowly as possible uh, across the slower water. This is absolutely effective because your line is able to move much slower. The fish have a better chance of reacting and getting your fly versus your line being across the faster moving water and the current just pulling your flies way too fast. All right, guys, when you're out in the, <laughs> out in the stream like this or on a creek or river and you got to work on your line. Well, I've already thrown it in, but I had a little tangle with those two flies. Anyway, you know, don't be afraid to utilize a, a branch or a bush or, you know, the bank or something like that to rest your fly rod on where you're trying to, you know, get it undone, especially for, you know, beginners where uh, it's kind of hard, you know, to get everything untied and all that. This is just a real easy way to put your rod, you know, put your rod up there and you can just, you know, your, your hands are free to work on everything else. So this little guy took the, the dropper. Sweet. Let's get him back in the water. Guys, yeah, so we're gonna change the angle of approach. As you see, I've been casting over this fast water, you know, to get over there and it kind of drifts. So I've been either holding my rod tip high to kind of drift that nymph or just, you know, uh, uh, correcting my line and and uh you know trying trying to keep it as slow as possible even with this fast water taking my line so we're going to change the approach real quick anyway this is the whole point of this i'm going to get actually uh upstream here and cast down and just let it slowly go down through that area instead of fighting over this fast water and let's see what happens with that What was interesting with this guy is, you know, I threw in, I threw in, let it drift down, but then I was actually stripping back and then he hit it. So we're going to try that, see if we can uh, increase our hookup ratio here. So as you can see there on the, the GoPro footage, the, you know, I was throwing down there and you could just see the line, you know, tick every time, like I throw it down, right. And I would strip it. And when I, right when I stop, you know, right when I pause, it would go tick, tick. And, uh, and you know, so then I would try to set it. So I missed a few there. You can see like my line ticking a few times and I miss it, 
but then I got it. I just got it on that last one. But uh, but yeah, just throwing down. I'm just letting it go down slowly, and then I'm just retrieving it. You know, uh, like I don't know, just like a uh, a couple strips, and then pause, and then a couple strips, and a pause, and boom. You know, you'll you'll feel them take it pretty decent, and then you just go ahead. You know, lift your rod tip up and set it. Pretty cool, guys. You. Even if you think the conditions aren't prime, I really didn't think they were going to be prime. Yeah, we have a, a decently warm day here, but the water's freezing. This river is definitely way uh, higher and faster than it normally is. Uh, this proves that even if you, the conditions aren't right, you still should try because you just never know what's going to happen. You guys saw some of the bass I have on here. You've seen all these little sunfish. Hey, I love doing this. This is so awesome. Get out there, guys. Go do it yourself, too. Let's keep fishing, see what else we can get. Guys, there's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes they're, you know, they're taking this uh, top patch rubber leg fly, and then sometimes they're taking that bottom smaller one. And this guy's no really bigger than any of the other ones, so it's just kind of cool the dynamic throwing the double fly setup. All right, guys. So we're gonna <laughs> <don't> fall. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and move spots. I think. Sorry to push you guys around here. Uh, so we've been just fishing this little hole back here. We're gonna try to get to the other side. We're gonna try to get to the other side of that area over there. I don't know if I'm gonna have to go around on the bank or what. It's it's actually pretty deep right in here, and the water, like I said, the water's flowing pretty fast. I don't. I got waders on, right? Frog togs, guys. Love it. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I may walk around. It's a little shallower over there. I may walk around and, and see what I can do. But anyway, um, my GoPro I think is about dead. So we're gonna just uh, we're gonna film what we can and uh, move locations here. I'll show you guys when we get there. You guys, I don't know if you can see, but there's a nice little worn trail right through here. Like I've told you guys before, when you're out in the woods and you're looking for a way, you know, to get through a wooded area like this, just find you a little animal trail. And you can kind of see it goes up and it goes around over in there. So you just find your little animal trail. And uh, generally you can kind of work your way around through the woods real good. Uh, following, you know, animal trails and things like that. 
uh, at least get a clear way through. Yeah, you can always cut your way through, but sometimes a little easier. So, all right, guys, well, I hope this is picking it up, but this area right here is actually pretty clear. It's kind of open, not real open behind me over here, but we're gonna go ahead and try to uh, just do some roll cast uh, right out in this little area, see if we can't pick out something. Long your sunfish. Oh yeah. Gotta love these little guys. Get a drink. All right. Gotta love the long your sunfish. Those guys fight so good. If you've been a fly fisherman very long, you know that tangles are part of the journey. The important thing is to push on through and don't let it run your day. Remember, you're out fishing having a great time. Who cares about a little line tangle? Trying to fix my shoe and got bit. Gotta be a bass in here. Gotta be. Oh yeah, solid fish. Little chunk along here. Yeah, nice little chunk. Found where all the long ears hanging out. They're all taking the, the dropper fly. It's got like some tumors or something. Some kind of growth. <laughs> so guys, yeah, this is what I this is a setup I generally use on the Guadalupe with an attractor. Track and fly or tractor fly, whatever you want to call it, and then a dropper, you know, it's a little nymph or whatever. Uh, normally use a patch rubber legs for my tractor fly, and generally this is how, you know, we fish, fish a double fly setup on the Guadalupe, but it works great in any river or stream for bass and sunfish. Because you'll pick up bass on that tractor fly, and you'll pick up sunfish on that dropper. So you pretty much got a double threat and fish all day long. No matter the condition, because this water is cold. <laughs> nice warm day, but cold water, so definitely the warm day's helping. Oh, had a good bite.
He took the pats. <laughs> so, so last one about this size, took the dropper. This guy <laughs> took the pats. There he goes. I knew there was going to be fish on the back side of this, you know, uh, little area where there's a lot of slack water. It's nice and deep. You got about, I don't know, 40, 50 foot here, 10 foot wide, nice, slow, deep water. That's where, that's those kind of areas you got to look for when you got, when you got too much water <laughs> or the water's too fast, too cold. And just fish it slow, take your time. Do a good bit. Really want to snag a bass. Boom. <laughs> a little longer. Also, guys, I wanted to show you real quick. I'm using Crocs. Yes, with with my waders. Crocs. You're going, what? Crocs with waders? How can you do that, man? You should be wearing wading boots or, you know, uh, uh, some kind of, you know, some kind of Sims or Orvis boots or something like that. I'll tell you what, these $40 Crocs over my waders work awesome. It was a sheer accident. Uh, my real nice high-end uh, boots that uh, felt bottom boots, actually, really nice felt bottom boots that Joe gave me last year. Uh, they messed up and I was like, man, I'm just gonna, I just gotta use my Crocs for, for this time. And I just loosened the straps up and, and made them work. And I tell you what, these things are awesome. They may not uh, be perfect in all conditions, but I tell you what, they're so comfortable and they work on rock, on fast water. I mean, I've been using them in, on the Guadalupe and here and everything. You don't always have to buy expensive stuff, guys, to get out there and go fishing. Oh, no way. No way. I got to show you guys this. Check that out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I don't think I can. I hope you guys can see that. I don't think I can get up on the bank here. It's just nasty and full of mud. Oh, man. But hopefully y'all can, can see that. Two. Two on one cast. <laughs> Wow, crazy. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and finish it up for today. Guys, hey, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate the view. As usual, I'm going to uh, encourage you guys to get out there, go fly fishing. It doesn't matter the temperature. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter the temperature if you're in Chicago and it's 50 below. But anyways, if there's open water like this and uh, you're not going to you know, freeze to death, literally, then I encourage you guys definitely get out there during the winter. Uh, 
you know, fly fishing is not just a spring, summer, and fall sport. You can do it during the winter too, if you're, you know, if you have open water, and possibly if you're in the south. Anyways, we're fortunate. But uh, guys, thanks so much again. Uh, remember, guys, like, subscribe, uh, share this video. Uh, definitely means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Helps grow the community. Helps get the word out, and uh, you know, helps. Uh, hopefully help it encourage and and uh, you know inspire other people to get out there and go fly fishing uh, definitely do a lot of other stuff you know other outdoor stuff on this channel so not specifically just fly fishing all the time uh, do some regular fishing uh, as well you know spin reel fishing I love to do a little ultralight fishing uh, definitely love kayaking and camping and kayak camping and all these kind of things as well as you guys know seen in some previous videos so uh, Hey, you know, like and subscribe, share this stuff. Let's uh, let's grow this community. So I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks so much again. God bless and go fly fishing. Uh, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> just like, just like stepped up to my ankle in mud right there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let's catch some fish.